In terms of constructivism in the classroom, there's something called STS, Science, Technology, Society. It's a specific uh, set of teaching methodology that allows you as a science teacher to incorporate various realms of both the community and local, state, district, national education. It allows you to bridge the gap between what a student knows in the classroom and what a student perceives or deals with or impacts with in their lives. Furthermore, STS, we're going to go into the history of it. First, we'll do a definition of STS, looking at what the research says about the STS, because it is a modern and very well-researched educational methodology. Furthermore, we're going into what the methodology specifically entails for you as a teacher. Then, and now, it would be very disingenuous of me, I feel, that uh, I only gave you the support for science, technology, and society. And so I'm going to do a complete review of the literature and also give you the criticisms against science, technology, and society. Because ultimately, it is up to you, the teacher, to decide how much of this, if any, and to what degree, to put into your classroom. It would be both uh, arrogant and naive of me to come here today before you and tell you that this is something that is going to work 100% in your classroom, that you must implement for success. In reality, different methodologies, different objectives work in your classroom because if the learner is an individual, then certainly every classroom is an individual scenario and situation. And furthermore, we're going to go into results of science, technology, and society. As far as the development of STS, it started in Britain in the 1970s. John Zinman was the first to coin the term. Some of his books on educational reforms around the 80s. Of course, like many things, including the flu, everything jumps across the Atlantic Ocean. So the STS started as a movement within the United States. And I would highly recommend noting this name, Dr. Robert E. Yeager from the University of Iowa is one of the foremost proponents and researchers of STS within the classroom. We'll see some of his studies within the U.S. and cross-cultural studies that he has performed in unison with Marmara University in Turkey and various universities in Britain. He's the foremost researcher in the field right now. Most of the current research not only began with its origins at the University of Iowa, but it's still a hot spot for Science Technology Society research. In the late 80s and 90s, several organizations called for science reform. For example, National Science Teachers Association, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and the National Research Council found that what we were teaching in terms of science within the classroom was inadequate towards specific goals. That it was too far too traditional, rote, focus on factual information, memorization, and not on the tools, the skills, and the abilities that individuals need to work in the actual field of science, whether it is to do research, to be an engineer, be a developmental scientist, or even a lab technician. They simply lack the fundamental ability to apply these factual concepts to things in their everyday lives and their work environment. So in terms of the demand, the Reformation, the organizations for science reform demanded a few very specific things. First, they mandated that any sort of education in science would, quote, manifest the ability to critically examine problems. And I'm sure, once again, another buzzword, examine and critically, right? How do I critically examine a problem? I think part of that is realizing that a problem in itself can be tackled through multiple directions multiple methods, and as long as the student is able to justify reasonably and appropriately due to the science that they are solving the problem in a fully examinatory method. Furthermore, you should be able to apply science to real world problems. What does it matter if you learn science within the classroom? You're not going to be, well some of us will, but you're not going to be within the take classroom one? for your for a little while. Are you just pointing it? You need to be able to apply science not only into your field of study, but into your everyday life. Whether it's using a can of Coke to take off the battery acid that's decayed and calcified onto your car battery. Whether or not it's adding a little salt to change the vapor pressure to modify your time. All these little bitty tricks that you can learn 
whether or not you wanted to sit watching a basketball game and start calculating angles or maximum throw distance or velocity of a thrown object, hang time, etc. All of these are applicable within your modern lives. And furthermore, fostering greater interest in the science because if students are motivated outside of your classroom, there is absolutely nothing that's going to stop them from learning. One of the very surprising things that I always find as a teacher is when a student asks me a random question. I always answer them, but then I look around and I say, if you had this question in your mind, what is the first thing you do? Personally, I go put it in Google. But these students aren't relying, they're not taking responsibility for their education, they're relying fully on the teacher. And just like their parents, the teacher, the instructor, won't always be there. So instead of taking a direct command over what they need to learn or how they have to learn it, we need to teach students to have their own interests in the sciences and to facilitate them learning for themselves because that's going to be ultimately more effective in their lifetime. In terms of early definitions of SDS, work by Berlin and Kumar in 1993 took surveys of state science supervisors, finding that nearly every single state science supervisor had a few commonalities in their definition. First, that all states agree that STS is a focus on the interaction, that being the key word, on science, technology, and society, with technology being sort of the gap filler. How do you transition from the science you learn in the classroom to its applications within society? Furthermore, nine states added that STS focused on personal responsibility, not just in the information they learned, but also in the information they had had to carry into the community and have a meaningful impact on their local environment. And we'll find out some more research done by Jaeger and Akay later on about responsibility in the community and the effects of these students on the community after being taught by science, technology, and science and society. In terms of later definitions of STS, they now focus on the interactions of science and the community and how it impacts the students' lives. For example, the operational context is in broad <laughs> such that STS can relate to all students, not just those in the sciences. There are currently research underway to apply the STS methodology into social studies. That way you can interact the facts of history with the current ongoing implications of its effects on society. Furthermore, some more recent research by Lawrence and Jaeger from the University of Iowa found that the overall scope of an STS classroom is one that, and I quote, relies on the student actively seeking information to utilize and sees science as a means of solving problems not only larger problems in society, but simple problems in your everyday life. And furthermore, identifies problems within the community. And in terms of everyday life and science, I am most notably work, moved by the work of Mikhail Krishnowski, a um, small c creativity humanist that views creativity and innovation not as a domain-defying movement, but instead views creativity and innovation as a small, every single day action, whether it's to reach something we cannot normally reach on top of the refrigerator, or to solve basic technology problems. He views each and every individual as someone who is inherently creative and will, given proper constraints that he, must over, he or she must overcome, be a creative individual and produce creative work.